there was nothing on this whole floor. But Monday morning, it went from nothing to what you see out there, at least on this part. By Friday, there was um, 1,000 beds downstairs, um, and now we're building another 2,000. So in two weeks, we're going to build a 3,000-bed um, medical facility. Right now, we're trying to save lives. So everybody got a pitching. We got to do something. We got a lot of trucks coming in to be offloaded with the beds and the chairs and the pillars and the hospital equipment. Within a couple of days, this thing got to be finished. Remember to maintain a six-foot generation. This reminds me of 9-11. Because 9-11, you was receiving a lot of stuff to give out. Gloves, the hats, the masks, the surf blade, the shovels. In any exhibition hall, you basically have an open space which you then fill with things and then you take them out and something else comes in behind it. We're continuing to function in that way here, it's just a different kind of product that we're moving around. It's everything you need in operating a hospital. So there are sinks, there are buckets, there are paper towels, there are PPE. We're trying to take the pressure off of the hospital system. Everybody to come here is supposed to be non-COVID-19. They're not on ventilators. People we are looking at are recovering from surgery. They're walking, they're talking. If somebody starts to show those signs that's downstairs having care, they'll be moved to the acute care facility that has, is boxed in. The intent is then we'd be able to test because they're now showing signs. If they come out positive, then the eventual goal would be to return them to a COVID-19 facility. They're gonna take care of that person, so if they have to stay here, or we can get them to a hospital that has COVID-19 beds available, um, that decision will be made as we're working through it.